ವರ್ಣಿವೇಶರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಘನಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಅವರು ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ಗಂಗ್ಸ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮೆ ಕಠೋ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಸನ್ ಅವರು ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ we are talking about gopanand swami and his divine qualities and how he has acquired and how he sold the same divine power as bhagwan swami narayan possess now today we continue 142 chapter of bhakta chintamani sadguru shri nishkudanand swami rat for more precise and some more detail incident happened in sadguru sri gopalanand swami's life sadguru nishkudanand swami rat for Nis- sadguru sri gopalanand swami in this bhakta chintamani 142 chapter as we have discussed how sadguru gopalanand swami as a kusal bhat by his childhood he never uh, like anything related to world or re- related to this um, his family meaning he had no kind of attachment with this worldly things worldly relations and anything that is not related to god then after we also discuss how our puja guruji has the same qualities at his childhood now today niskuran so rat in the same chapter vadi ek divas nivat kahu varna vivadi vikhyat करता भजन महाराज तनु तन भान भूल्या छे आपणु वंस अपॉन अ डे सद्गुरु श्री गोपालानंद स्वामी एज ही हैज नॉट इनिशिएटेड एज अ साधु सो बिफोर ही मेट भगवान स्वामी नारायण एट द टाइम हिज नेम वाज खुशाल बट this incident related to his childhood and that's why sadguru nishkuran swami rat for gopalan swami as khusal bhat once upon a day khusal bhat continuing his worshiping maharaj and while he worship bhagwan swami naran he forget even his own body meaning a sense of iness and minus when he f- forgot iness and minus then at night he experienced some divinity in his own mind in this state of divinity he even forget uh, everything related to world he didn't experience his own body he didn't experience uh that he was staying in his house he was staying on this earth everything and by that finally he attained he got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan now after that after this divine darshan of bhagwan swami narayan from this day kusal bhar acquire so many divine qualities so many divine powers and by that power whatever kusal but at the time thought in his mind then that will happen immediately and through man incident 
like if one has any kind of desire or any kind of problem and when he explain his problem to kusal but and within short period of time kusal but cure his problem he solve his problem and in this way one person got such experience the another 3 4 many persons got the same experience with kusal but and that's why all all of the people uh, lived surrounding torla village they all knew about gopal uh, kusal bird's divine qualities and all have some uh, special feelings for kusal bird that he is special person he is not like us and one day by one day one month by month and year after year passed once upon a day all those uh, people of surrounding area they thought the monsoon season passed still there is not a drop of water come as a rain so now what will we do and at the time in india there is no any kind of other sources of water if there is no rain then there there will be very very tough to live on this earth for human and animals in such kind of situation all those people surrounding this torla village they knew about divine uh, they knew about kusal bird's divine quality and that's why they finally decided to go to kusal bird and explain their problems all together met kusal bird and they explained their problem that there was no rain from last four months and there will be no any sign that will be rain in future so what will happen there is no water sufficient water on this earth and that's why there is no any uh, crops in farm there is very scarcity of even grass and so animals even suffer from hunger and thirst and after some months even human cannot have uh, sufficient water and food so if you will do anything for us then we all get benefit in this way all those people they pray to kusal bird and kusal bird at the time he said okay set for some time all those sat there in front of kusal bird and kusal bird pray to bhagwan swami narayan kusal bird pray to maharaj that please maharaj fall the rains so that all can have benefit mean, meaning all can have some happiness and within short period of time there would be very heavy rain and with this rain all the people become very happy because all animals have solved their problem of, of scarcity of water and food and all humans they have also the same problem and they also will be released from this problem then all those people understood more and more glory of kusal bird now kusal bird became very young meaning he has passed his 18 or something near age and that's why now he he was mature so he desired to meet maharaj but before that one incident happened as he has no any kind of other business and in india we know at that time there was no any kind of particular schools in india but those who are brahmin and those who learn sanskrit and other scriptures other books they taught others and kusal but he was a brahmin he learned everything and that's why he started school in his village now this is primary school and that's why he 
uh, call all of this uh, small kids of the village when kids came to kusal bird's home at the time kusal bird he had no any worldly desire and he that's why he also didn't want to give this worldly knowledge to students because worldly knowledge is only gives happiness in this world meaning by acquiring uh these worldly degrees and certificates and education one can only earn money and reputation in this world but not more than that that's it but if person have divine knowledge of bhagwan and his ekantik santo then by uh by using this knowledge this divine knowledge one can acquire happiness not only this world but also after his death and kusal bar also desire to give eternal knowledge to those student who come to him for education and that's why kusal bar taught something related to world meaning worldly knowledge but most of the time he preach these students the uh, system of meditation how one can acquire divine darshan of bhagwan in meditation and in this way kusal bhat taught only for bhagwan bhagwan and bhagwan but because of his true knowledge of bhagwan and exact mode of worship those even kids one cannot believe but these kids they even got status of samadhi meaning they can attain a situation or position in such a state that they can have divine darshan of bhagwan in samadhi now this is not only for one day this was continue for many days and uh after many days one day kusal but uh ask those student that i want to know where bhagwan swami narayan is right now so you go to samadhi and search where is bhagwan swami narayan after few minutes those students came back from samadhi and they answer kusal bhat that you don't worry about to meet bhagwan swami narayan because he himself come to you in the form of brahmin he himself lead you to to the place where bhagwan swami narayan right now stay and after that bhagwan swami narayan himself come to todla to kusal bhat in the form of a brahmin and with this bhagwan in the form of brahmin kusal bhat himself live uh kusal bhat himself live for meeting maharaj now what was happen in the way at the time there is no any kind of a uh, vehicle or there is no any kind of transportation facilities so they have to walk and in the way there is very far distance so in the way bhagwan in the form of brahmin gave some food and water to kusal bhat and in this way one after one and in this way many after many days kusal bhat and bhagwan in the form of brahmin reach in jatalpur near amdavad bhagwan swami narayan at the time stay in jatalpur so now when bhagwan in the form of brahmin and kusal bhat reach to jatalpur bhagwan himself said bhagwan swami narayan stay here and you should go to meet him uh, i will continue my journey and in this way 
After a few minutes, Bhagwan Swami Narayan, in the form of Brahmin, disappear from that place, and Kusal Bhat, as directed by this Brahmin, meaning Bhagwan, he reached where Bhagwan Swami Narayan stayed, and then. When Kusal Bhat met Bhagwan Swami Narayan, Bhagwan Swami Narayan asked him, "How you reach here from your village? Who gave you address of this place? And how can you be present over here?" Then Kusal Bhat explained that one Brahmin came to him, and uh, in the way he fed him, he provided him food and water. And other facilities, and after they reach here in Jaitapur, the Brahmin continue his journey. But many incident, what was happen in the journey, Bhagwan himself explain to Kusal Bhat. And by hear hearing such incident, even Kusal Bhat got surprised that how Maharaj knows. No doubt, Kusal Bhat he is coming direct from Aksardham with Maharaj, but he behaved as human being, so that we can learn from his life. And in this way, Kusal Bhat met Bhagwan Swami Narayan in Jaitapur, and Bhagwan himself narrated all of his journey, what was happened at first night, second night, what was happened at third day. In this way, all of his journey explained to him by Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and after getting this knowledge and divine presence of Bhagwan throughout his journey, Kusal Bhat even uh, understood that uh, Bhagwan Swami Narayan is no doubt he already knows Bhagwan Swami Narayan is Sarva Pari, but still to preach us. That whenever we got such divine incident in our life, we should understand that this is only because of divine power and uh, very, very much mercy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan upon us. In this way, Kusal Bhat met Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and after that, he became sant. And how he continue his journey with Maharaj. And our santo, and how he even saw many, many such divine incident and divine power like that of Maharaj to the people, to the devotees. That that is also written in the same chapter of Bhakta Chintamani 142. But we will continue it next Sunday. Ganesha Maharaj ni je. प्रभुतव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल जिन्न जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारी एह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी एह कंशाम महाराज नीजे हरि कृष्ण महाराज नीजे स्वामी नारायण भगवान नीजे सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी आर बिलवेड कंशाम महाराज 
pathmaker to our liberation, our beloved, divine, and always with us, our Puja Pad Guruji, Puja Bhagat, all of you devotees, Jai Swami Nave. You know, a couple of days back, I was going about my day, and I came caught across a quote that I really admired and liked. The quote was by an American author, but it seemed like that person must have experienced something in life in order to really come up with this quote. He said, ups and downs in life are very important to keep us going because a straight line even in an ECG means we are not alive. What is he talking about? Well, the first sentence is easy. Ups and downs in life are very important to keep us going. You're probably thinking, how could you say downs? Ups we can understand. If we have ups in life, meaning if we have good fortune, if we have everything is according to our standards, then yeah, that can keep us going. But why did this person mention downs? He explains, because a straight line, even in an ECG, means we are not alive. An ECG is a machine. If you ever go to a hospital um, and a person is lying on that bed, on the left side or right side, there's this machine that is monitoring our heartbeat. And that heartbeat line is always going up down up down meaning monitoring our heartbeat and obviously when it's going up and down that's a good sign because that person is alive and heartbeats are developing but if it goes to a straight line that means that person has cardiac arrest or his heart or her heart is not beating anymore so the author is saying because a straight line even in ECG means we are not alive. So expect the worst, expect even the best, but do not expect that everything will always go well in according to plan. Now, today's lecture is something that we deal with every day. It's all in the world. Today, we want to review and go over Hardship. Hardship. Two words, but something that can completely shake us to the point where we are not able to stand mentally. And a word that, if we accept it in that perspective, it can keep us going, just like how this author mentioned. Well, in the world, this whole world is developed with hardships. There is not a single person that does not go through hardships. But everyone knows hardships is a horrible time or a bad thing. But to get an exact meaning from the reference of dictionary.com, hardship means a condition that is difficult to endure, suffering, deprivation, and oppression. I'm sure one of these words probably hit home to you and you understand the word completely as I am talking about. But the whole world deals with this. But what my question is to you, how does a devotee deal with hardship, a true devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, and how does a person in the world deal with hardship? That is the question to ask. Because as we are listening to this lecture, I'm sure most of you are devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. We go through hardships in the world because the world is like that. But let's take a look. How can we deal with it? Or even so, how have others in the past dealt with this hardship? Is it compared anything close to ours? Even if we look at that, we can still see and understand that Ours is on a very minute scale. Well, a regular person in the world 
if he goes through some kind of hardship, he wavers and becomes completely unstable. His mind becomes like a monkey, you can say, or a bumblebee. It's never stable. What do I mean? Well, let me give you a couple examples. What kind of hardships do we consider to be something catastrophic that happened? Something where you can't, you can't stop telling others about how sad you are. You can't stop texting others. You can't stop spreading the news around the people who you know, your relatives and others, about the hardship that you're going through. Let me give you a couple examples so you get some kind of perspective in mind. Suppose we get a fever, but this is not an ordinary fever. You go to your doctors and the doctor takes your blood because you think that you have something more. And the doctor takes your blood and then the reports come in and you have some kind of viral. You go crazy, meaning crazy in the matter, your mental stability is not anymore. So it's just something like, what do I have to do? What, how do I have to get better? This is constantly going through your mind. What medication do I have to take? Or what doctor do I have to visit? Do I have to visit a specialist? Or do I have to visit a certain kind of doctor that will do this job? Or do I have to go Ayurvedic, you know, organic? What do I have to do? I have to do something. These kinds of thoughts constantly come into our mind one after another, just like a wave in the ocean non-stop and due to this trauma in our mind it's kind of like we're having a heart attack in our mind we can't stop spreading the word and making it such a catastrophe when it's just a viral infection that can be cured by some antibiotics that your doctor has recommended and prescribed to you this is smaller let's say let's go to the next level financial trouble Oh, this one's really, really dirty. Financial trouble. Well, this one, everyone's dealing with somehow, one way or another. Not the rich people. I'm talking about the medium, medium class and the lower class. You don't have money or you do some kind of unfashionable thing where you lend a couple of thousand dollars to someone and you borrow more than you can lend things like this in your mind constantly when you wake up this is on your mind it's on it's making you unstable you can't perform any kind of activity in your life spiritual not so spiritual obviously but any kind of activity in your life which will keep you happy sane or at least stable that's the word we're focusing on here so what do you do you go about, you go to your relatives, and you just spread word, and you make it another catastrophe, when it's really not. It's all in your hands how you want to deal with your financial assets. But if you make it something more than it is, what can you do about it? And lastly, poor living conditions. This is nothing. Something, if I can tell you that the devotees in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, what kind of conditions they lived in, or even the conditions you see in South America, Central America, India, China, all these third world countries, they're very, very poor Africa. We haven't seen any of these conditions. We live in the most prosperous country in the United States, yet since we don't have the luxuries or the facilities that we want or need just like maybe we have an mp3 player but it's very very cheap and it's very very low profile and it's not called an ipod okay we have such uh we have such a mentality that we have to tell our friends oh my god my parents are like this and you know i can't they can't even afford this and all of you have it i'm so jealous of you all these things these mental breakdowns that make us unstable what what can you do about this this is these are some situations of a person who's living in the world now a devotee in 
the same kinds of hardships remain stable due to his faith in God and the Akantik Satpurush, that's the only way. Well, I want to tell you a couple of stories. In the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, the devotees that lived there witnessed Bhagwan, witnessed Nan Santo, and how they lived, what kind of hardships they had to go through. Even Maharaj had to go through hardships when he came on this in this world. But since you are devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, and you can say God can obviously tolerate hardships because He's God, I want to give you live examples of devotees, of santos that went through hardship in Bhagwan's time and recent hardships. Because this is the only way you can get a practical scope of how to live, how to assess, how to pretty much deal with these kinds of problems when they come into your life. But before that, Sadhguru Nishkuran Swami has written a kadi, a verse, it's narrated. Sukha dukha ave sarve bedu, temara kha josti ramati, jadvisha marajan ne vadikari shajatan ati. Meaning, he has written that he has written that sukha dukha ave sarve bedu, meaning sometimes sukh will come. Sometimes dukh will come, meaning pain. Happiness and pain will come. They'll come together, they'll come different times. In that time, keep a very, very firm, stable mind. He's saying that Bhagwan will save you from these hardships. Just keep a stable mind, keep firm faith in Bhagwan. So let's enter into the lives of these devotees who have really witnessed and who have really went through hardships that you can just compare to your life if it's even maybe even one percent okay so there was a devotee by the name of Viro Shailaryo who lived in the a village in Gujarat now he was a very staunch devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan but obviously in that time, in the past, each village had like a king, like a ruler. These villages weren't large, but they had that kind of system where each village had, you, you know how we can say a mayor right now. In the same way, that same fashion, they had a certain kind of ruler. And the ruler of the village was the name of Hado Kuman, okay? And he was completely against satsang. In that time, in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, there was so much oppression and for devotees and santos because Bhagwan Swaminarayan was rising. Bhagwan Swaminarayan was changing the ways of social society. Bhagwan Swaminarayan was pretty much deleting and destroying adharma, those people who wanted to do adharma. He was changing the ways of the social norms and due to that, those who still wanted to follow those norms, those bad, corrupt ways, were oppressing and were pretty much giving hardship to santos and haribhaktos in that time. So, this ruler, Hado Kuman, was completely against satsang and was completely against Viro. So, at one time, Viro was obviously a staunch devotee and he decided to go to Gadra to have the darshan of Maharaj. And at that time, he left with his cart, his uh, some grains, some food, and his family. And he left to visit Maharaj there. Well, Hado Kuman had a very, very malicious mind. So what he decided to do was he hired a couple of men and told them to burn down Vito's home. To completely burn down Vito's home. They did that and they accomplished their job. Viro, after a couple of days, came back from Gadara after having Bhagwan's darshan and saw that his house was burned down. Right there and there, he stopped. He stopped and he thought that Bhagwan is the all-doer. 
even if my house is burned down, look what I still have. And right there and then, Haro Kuman came to look at Vito, Vito's face, his expression, how he was, how, I mean, was he depressed? Was he completely just destroyed ment mentally? What was going on? Because he wanted to see that. Haro Kuman was, was a, you can say, an Asuri Jeev, a demonic Jeev, a soul. He wanted to see that person, that devotee of Bhagwan Swamiran suffer. So he smirked and said, See Vira, what did you gain by becoming Swami Narayan and going to Gadara? Swamiran has done a lot for me, Vira said. Because when I went to Gadara, he saved me, my family, my bullock cart, and these vessels of grains. So, I have everything that I have taken with me. Even if my home is burned down, I can make another one. Now, at that time, I want you to put yourself in that situation. If you were there, if you were in the place of Viro, and you were a satsangi, and you had to go or you wanted to go for the Darshan of Maharaj and when you came back Hado, this ruler burned down their house which had, I'm sure, which had a lot of belongings such as, you know, your clothes even money was there, what not because when Vito did go he didn't take everything with them he just took certain necessities a little bit of money in case he had to stop in the middle some grains, his family and some clothes, that's it he didn't take his whole house with him. So I'm sure there were some possessions left in that house that he probably had that were valuable to him. In that situation, if you were there and you had to deal with that, how would you react? Would you react like Vito? Or would you become completely, you can say, not a devotee. You would, you would change into a monster and go after and, and attack Hado Kuman, what would you do? This is when this knowledge comes into play. If we have understood Bhagwan to be the all-doer, if we have understood that hardships as a devotee, I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, so if I do develop hardships, if I do get hardships, how should I deal with it? Not like a person in the world, but I should deal with it in a certain fashion, what would Bhagwan think? How would Bhagwan react to my reaction? In the same fashion, when you think of these certain thoughts, you completely become stable there and you would do something that Bhagwan would like. You would not react in an odd fashion because a person of the world would attack Hado Kuman. But a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan would use sadhuta. A sadhuta meaning saintliness is not only for saints. Saintliness can also be used, you can also can be acquired by devotees because saintliness is something that cannot be, is not taught to you. It's not something that it, you can just read in a book and develop. It's something that is given by the Akantik Sadpurush, by His grace. But only when you make a certain effort in your part, on your part. And your effort is only when you go through some kind of hardship. As I mentioned, a fever or some kind of financial problem. Think, that's your process. That's your job. Think, I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. How should I react? That's all you have to do. And automatically, when the great saint sees this, automatically sadhuta comes into you. And that's how Bhagwan Swaminarayan is pleased. He's pleased by sadhuta, saintliness in our life. So, this was the reaction of Vito. Now, this is just one story. I read another story regarding this exact factor, but physical pain. There is a devotee by the name of Gadva Patel, from a certain village and he was blind from birth. However, he used to always see the Murti of Bhagwan because it was Bhagwan's grace and he could see, meaning not with his physical eyes, but 
in his heart, in his atma, he can experience Bhagwan constantly. So once he felt severely ill, he would get cramps in the stomach and he would scream. That's how much pain he had to bear. But listen at what he had to say. He said that, Oh Maharaj, test this Garvo as much as you like. Give me as much hardship as you wish. I know you are standing there watching me. So I will never say save me from this hardship. In the Vachnamrud, Maharaj has said that whoever does not think Bhagwan is right there in front of you and you are put up for Fasi or you can say at a stake, you would never think or even a person who never develops the thought that Bhagwan save me has true faith in Bhagwan. This devotee had such kind of faith. Now, as I'm talking about physical illness, we don't have certain kinds of pains like this. At least most of us don't. I can say 98% of us devotees don't have any kind of pains. We have two legs, two arms, two eyes. Everything is perfect. Our physical body is in good condition. Maybe we have some kind of small thing like diabetes, BP, those older devotees, things like that. But this can be controlled through modern medicine. So it's not a problem. But in that time, without any kind of modern medicine, this devotee suffered pain. Yet, what did he think? Maharaj. What did he say? He said, he is talking to Maharaj. You can test me however much you want, but I know you are watching me. So I will never tell you to save me. I'm reminded by Puja Yogi Swami, a sadhu of our Puja Guruji, who lived for nine years as his disciple. And two years ago, he got burned severely, about 70% of his body. This, in third degree, which is very, very catastrophic, it's pretty much near, it, the doctors even said, a person over 40% cannot survive. Puji Yogi Swami lived in the hospital for one month. And during that time, his pain, his whole body was burned, was black. During that time, there was many, many priests that visited Swami. Many, many santo, meaning high santo. Uh, spiritually high santo who visited Swami b due to the relation of Puja Guruji and one great Swami came a very very great Swami known in society by many people came there and said Yogi Swami I will pray to Maharaj that you get better Yogi Swami said Swami humbly even in that position Swami do not pray for my health, but pray that my faith in Maharaj and Guruji remains stable. This is what he prayed for. In that situation, how could we can say, of course, a person, regular person cannot, but even a saint. Imagine what kind of mentality he has molded his mind throughout the nine years. Imagine what is in his heart. Obviously, Maharaj and Guruji, that is the only way he can say these words. Not only that, but Bhujit Swami, the next day, had, when, it, when he got burned that day, that 70%, he was taken to the hospital. And there, he was asking the doctor that, can, uh, when can I be released? I have seva the next day. When can I be released? The doctor said you're severely burned. I cannot release you right now. But even after such a situation, his thought was what? Seva. Seva of who? Santo and Bhakto. Meaning his daspanu, his humbleness is something that is remarkable. Something that a person cannot learn but it is acquired by the grace of Puja Guruji, who also possesses the most superior daspanu, which Sadguru Muktanan Swami had in his time. Now, 
this is just my example. A sadhu went through this kind of hardship and he went to Akshardham after one month. Bhagwan took him to Akshardham. But seeing so, we don't have any of these hardships. Yet, does our mind stay stable in Bhagwan and Guruji, even if we have small hiccups? Not even extreme hiccups like this. But if even if we remember any of these charitras or charitras or this recent one of Puja Yogi Swami, we'd be able to recognize and realize that Maharaj has put us in such an area where we have the best facilities, the modern facilities, we have the best sung, the company of sadhus and haribhaktos, we have Maharaj, we have a completely stable, healthy financial life, then what is there more to do? What is there more to think but to develop faith like Puja Yogi Swami in Maharaj and Guruji? And lastly, our Puja Guruji, who's been going through hardships ever since his birth till now, and he's still going through hardships. How many hardships can I name? And how many stories can I tell you? But all I can say is that the amount of hardships that Puja Guruji has been through, is going through, and will go through, and how he deals with it proves that he is an ekantik sadpurush. There is no way a regular, ordinary person, there is no way a manushya, a human, can deal with hardships like Puja Guruji has been through and is going through. Meaning that Puja Guruji is not a manushya, but he is an ekantik anadi mukt of Bhagwan Swami Narayan who is sent here to uplift unlimited souls, I can say. Because the Ekantik Satpurush has no limits. The Ekantik Satpurush has no restrictions. The Ekantik Satpurush is exactly one with God. And the Ekantik Satpurush, even if he deals with these hardships, he is giving us examples through his life that he is going through such kind of pains and dealing with it in one way that Bhagwan is Sarva Karta Arta, then us small ant-like devotees, sh how should we deal with our pains, which is minute, which is not even 1% of the pain that or the hardship that the Ekantik Satpurush is suffering. Saying this, the examples are right in front of us. All we have to do, all our task is, no matter how small of a hardship we go through or how big of a hardship we go through, our goal should be to able to keep such kind of faith as these previous devotees, as Puja Yogi Swami, and as Puja Guruji keeps in Maharaj, so that we can live a stable, healthy life as a devotee. Last, I would like to make an announcement that Yudh Sibir 2016, uh, the registration has launched. It's on the swaminarayan.org, the website you are currently viewing live on, the homepage. You're able to register. Please look into it. It's in Georgia, Macon, Georgia. We have another temple there, just like Loyadam, New Jersey. And many, many kids from around the United States are joining. So... You can get in touch there. There is an email and also a phone number if you have any questions. Take a look at it. And also social media. Those who use social media such as Facebook, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. Recently, there's a new, uh, you can say, account that's been opened up called Loyadam Utes. L-O-Y-A-D-H-A-M space Y-O-U-T-H-S. Please search Facebook or whatever Google Plus or whatever social media you have and you can subscribe there you can enlist and you would be able to get entry into the latest updates regarding Yudsibir and other news of Loyadam Yuts. saying this my humble Jai Swami Narayan.
श्रीपतिम श्रीधरम सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर महात्मज वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव कामद कारण श्री स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भज श्रीकंश्याम महाराजनी जय